In today's video, I will be programming BIP32 master seed generation from scratch in Python. And it will be basically continuation of our previous series when we were doing BIP39, which was a mnemonic, so this 12 or 24 words uh, code generated from some kind of entropy. Uh, the next uh, video was uh, base58, so how to encode any string in ba base58 in, in Python. And today we are moving to HD wallets, uh, which are basically hierarchical deterministic wallets, and how to create them in Python. So uh, today we will only focus on this kind of derivation from the seed. So here I've got the, the graphic on the screen. There is a seed that we generated in the video BIP39 mnemonic seed. From this seed, which we generated, we will create this master node for the BIP32 derivation. So as we can see, it's the depth uh, of zero. And in future videos, I will show you how to create uh, other depths like depth 1, depth 2, depth 3 because it uses a bit different derivation than creation of the master, master node, master, uh, master key, master private, master public key uh, and in today's video we only focus on creating this kind of derivation. So here in front of me, I've got the BIP32 proposal. BIP32, uh, it can be found on the GitHub repo of, uh, of Bitcoin. There is like the whole repository of uh, Bitcoin improvement proposals. And this is one of them, BIP32, uh, hierarchical deterministic wallets or HD wallets. Uh, wallets which can be shared partially or entirely with different system. Uh, each with or without the ability to spend coins. Uh, so this is important. <laughs> like the, this is only one sentence, but it's super important because using this kind of derivation scheme that that was proposed in BIP32 allowed us to to transfer our wallets from wallet to wallet. So if we would have this kind of mnemonic seed of like 12 or 24 words. Uh, whatever the the, the wallet uh, supporting BIP because BIP32 is just one of them. There is like BIP44, 45, 84 for SegWit. There is a BIP for pay to script hash as well. I don't remember the number, uh, but there are other BIP implementation of this BIP32 derivation. Uh, a, they are like slightly different. They are slightly different. They, they use a bit different serialization. So I will be speaking about that later on. Uh, but for now, okay, let's continue. Uh, we can uh, share it bef between different wallets. So we can import, export wallets. Uh, all these wallets now can, can find the paths because it's not like you will create this kind of wallet and your wallet will immediately know which, uh, which accounts are yours because from one seed you can derive infinite amount of public private keepers and it's like which which one to use uh, which one hold any value so that's why in bip32 uh, we had this kind of uh, scheme that uh, that we had depth zero depth one was M, uh, M0, depth 2 was M00, and depth 3, there were uh, all these addresses uh, M000, M001, M00, up to K. So that was BIP32. It was used in, uh, in Bitcoin Core, in some wallets like the Bread Wallet, and other like very basic, uh, basic wallets. Because later on, uh, there was a BIP44. Uh, that expanded on this kind of scheme. So uh, there were still like there, were, there was still like the master node. There were accounts, but also there were like currencies. Then there was some kind of uh, there was a chain. Was was it like a change? Was it like for external or internal things like that? I will explain it in full in BIP44 video. Uh, but for now, it's important to know that there are different ways of, of creating these kind of paths. And for BIP32, uh, 
two, it was like M00 and addresses. So that was it. Also, we can harden the, the key. Uh, I will explain it after we, we go further to, to like accounts, wallet chains in next video. It's, it's too much for this one. Uh, so stay with me. And also BIP32 allow you to, to have like watch only wallets because you can now import this kind of X private or X, rather X public key, uh, which, which basically will give you all these addresses that you can watch from this one single X pub of like wallet chain, all the, all the derivation you, you can do, like the wallet can derive by itself, having this one wallet chain M00, wallet will be able to derive all these addresses from this XPub. So we can give somebody this XPub and the person can basically send us the, the money or we can do these like watch, uh, watch only wallets. So things like that uh, are possible with BIP32. Uh, but going back to our picture, okay, so that was only one sentence. I won't be going full into that. Uh, that's too much for, for this video. Uh, but uh, what we want to do today in this video is I will take one of the uh, one of the test vector. I will take the test vector one uh, from the seed of this te test vector. I would like to create this chain M. So have this uh, exter external public key and external private key. So xpub and x private. So let's let's start with that. How to do that? Of course, we've got documentation just in front of us. Uh, master key generation, <laughs> we've got it here, and I've got it some of the some of the code examples here uh, because I feel it's uh, it's pretty convenient to to have it exactly when it was mentioned in the in the documentation. So I will share obviously the code and this kind of document and this infographic that I created, I will share it on my GitHub uh, page. It's in the description below. So go to my GitHub page if you want to see it and, and go with that. Uh, for now, I will just use it for, for the video. Okay, so let's start coding. Uh, master key generation. Uh, so we've got this amount of possible extended key parts, so 2 to the power of 512. So it's a lot. <laughs> That's why we have to we have to basically do this kind of scheme to, to know our addresses. Uh, so to, to do that, first thing is to generate a seed byte sequence, S, S is a seed of a chosen length uh, between 128 and 512 bits. We did that in our video of BIP39. So if you don't know what, I, what I'm talking about, go back to the video of BIP39. Uh, it's in the description below as well. And all this uh, seed generation is explained there. So we are taking some kind of entropy and created the seed out of it. And uh, this is our seed. So let's, let's start on the new project. Okay, I will leave some room for being a ski. And I will copy the string from the test vector that I was showing you guys earlier. And I left a bunch of space for importing different libraries. So the first one, obviously, Import uh, Okay, first line in. Okay, next one. Let's go back to the documentation. Calculate i, which is hmark. Hmark is like some kind of encryption. Uh, it uses uh, SHA five hundred twelve in our case, where the key will be like the the string called Bitcoin seed, and our data is the seed, so the seed uh, sequence S that we created here. So what we are doing is calculate I equals hmark new and uh, I added this bar B to, to basically tell it that this will be in bytes. 
uh, for B for Python to, to understand it, to read it for this library. Uh, so it's the string encoded in bytes, uh, Bitcoin seed, uh, our seed that we created here. Uh, we have to specify that our library is SHA 512 and digest to, to basically do, do the byte uh, conversion out of it. Okay, so let's let's write it. So next line. So I equal schmuck dot new uh, b bitcoin small seed. The next argument is our seed. I can type for, for my life. Uh, <laughs> uh, shib dot sha 512 and we have to digest it and that's our i. Now we have to divide this i to the left and right side from what I remember. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we've got to split it into two 32 byte sequences. I left and I write. So this is the the code. I left, I write, uh, unpack it from, from this I, I and I. So let's do that in our code. I left, I write equals I up to 32 and I after 32. And we've got our I left, I right. That's that's great. <laughs> Let's go forward. And this I left, I right will be used in the secret and chain. I'll speak about it in a second. So this is our master key generation. And now we have to ser serialize it. For serialization, here is the serialization format. So the the end result will be all of these things, the, the version bytes, uh, the depth, the fingerprint, child, chain code, and public or private key. And that will be our end string for, for after serialization. Then we would have to do some kind of uh, sequences to, uh, to like uh, add some kind of uh, checksum to that, but that will be later. Let's let's focus on the serialization. So let's start from just writing it out as some kind of uh, string concatenation. In our case, it will be in bytes. But yeah, let's start. So we've got version, which is ex private or ex public. Then we've got depth. Then we've got fingerprint child, chain code, and public or private key. So I will write right now this kind of string concatenation. Let's, let's do it here. So row private key equals, this is version, so x private. I could basically do the version, some kind of if, but I will just specify that this is the x private and depth and fingerprint and child and chain and data from private key. That will be our, our private that we'll derive from this I left, I write later on. Okay, the same for the public, copy it paste it uh, row public it's x public the same dev fingerprint child chain and data public okay that's it that's that's our end string now i will import hmac because i forgot to do that I will import hashlib. I told you guys a lot of libraries. OK. 
Okay. That's it. Let's go further. Okay. So, serialization format. Version bytes for mainnet, because we also got testnet for public and private key. But for mainnet, we'll have this kind of uh, sequence in hexadecimal that will basically translate after all this uh, of the, all this translation that will be our x uh, x pub at the beginning of the string that's why all this external uh, let's go here all these uh, external public private keys have this beginning x pub or x private this is basically the the hexadecimal representation of of this number and this number for private for testnet we've got uh, I think Tepriv or Tpub or something like that but it's a bit different so so yeah uh, if you want to do that for testnet obviously use use this kind of serialization I'm using it for mainnet so uh, this is my uh, this is my uh, serialization for version bytes. So let's let's code it. Let's go back to Okay, so okay. X private equals Vinaski on hex Lefi because we want it in uh in the byte uh, format for extended private key. I will copy it from the documentation. Okay, xpub is the same. So binaski dot on hex leafy. So into bytes. Uh, copy it. Hex leafy on hex leafy. Okay, that's it. The next uh, next thing will be depth, one byte depth, basically zero for master node, zero one for level one derived keys. So when we had this kind of uh... come on, load. So this is depth zero. That will be basically one byte zero. For for the depth one, it will be one. For depth two, it will be two. So yeah, that's that's pretty basic. So let's let's write it down. So depth equals in bytes slash x zero zero, which which is basically zero for one. It would be one and things like that. Uh, you can also write it down in like the integer and uh, encode it into bytes, but I would rather do it here explicitly. Now, fingerprint, another thing, uh, four bytes. So fingerprint for the parent key is basically all the zeros. Uh, this is how, how I code it, so, so yeah, if master key. Uh, for, for derivation, the, there is like the full, whole formula uh, for deriving the fingerprint, and I will be speaking about it in the next video. So right now, just, just use all zeros. So, fingerprint equals same byte slash zero slash zero slash zero slash zero okay now the next one will probably child number yeah so so the index and child number this is serialization <laughs> so for index zero, uh, we are taking uh, basically the zero and we are transforming it using big endian to have four byte. Let's do that. So our index is zero. This is our child index. Uh, it will iterate through, obviously through, through this child. So come on, load. So yeah. For the every depth it will iterate and it will rise uh, but our child is struct the back 
Picandium and our index. So basically it's like the way of storing uh, values starting from the most significant value in the sequence. That's that's our our child. Okay, next thing. And the chain code is I write. And our last thing will be public or private data. So let's write chain code I write. And I will add the secret, which is I left. And the secret will be used. So the secret will be used as this kind of input into our ECDSA function. I won't be speaking about much about this kind of ECDSA cryptography. Uh, if you are interested in that, read Andreas Antonopoulos' uh, book, Mastering Bitcoin. It's free or you can get it on Amazon. It's free on his GitHub or you can get it on Amazon. Uh, there is like the whole section on ECDSA. So if you are interested how ECDSA, uh, elliptic, elliptic curve cryptography works in Bitcoin, uh, read his book. There is like a whole section on that, but for now, Let's just go and go into the conventions section where there is explained what does it mean the serialization P from K for public keys or the zero and serialization 256K for private keys. Okay, so let's go to conventions. Okay, so this is our K private and it's, it's basically a derivation from ECDSA signing key from string and this is our secret so our i left with specified curve uh, so it's like uh, this sec uh, p two five six k one of ecdsa and uh, we also need our verifying key which is like the public key basically uh, so the k k brief that the big one is is for public so we've got chain we've got secret now we will be using this secret so small k private equals ecdsa dot signing key from string secret is one input the second one is our curve that we specify which bitcoin uses two five six K1 okay, saying key from string okay looks legit and big Kai private is a K private that get very fine key and obviously we have to include imports import ACDSA uh, we had this struct that pack so import struct and we have to import uh, two libraries from ECDSA that curves and ECDSA that ECDSA, basically some kind of uh, helper functions and helper methods. Okay, so we are very close. We are very close to, to finish. Now from this uh, verifying key, what we have to do, we've got 32 byte sequence, most significant byte first, and in here in serialization we have to concatenate this zero to the serialization for private key so that's why the result is this byte zero and this private key 
to string the, the small private key. Um, so let's let's write it down. Obviously, data private is equals to byte uh, slash x zero zero because we have to concatenate this uh, this initial byte to okay private dot to string and that's it that's our data private so this row private it's done we've got it ready for the public key as mentioned here we have to compare this 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 point and depending on this point we have to use different initial byte as here either 002 or 003 based on on the parity parity of the omitted coordinate i will just copy it from from the code that i have so we don't have to focus on that uh too much but it's it's the whole data data public serialization and as i said it's it's the, this first byte that depends on this kind of point on the curve so we are not using the small k private as in data private like here small k private which is like the private key but we are using this verifying key here uh, in the in the public section and after that we've got two strings that's that's great we've got two strings in in bytes uh let's run it let's see if it will run or have i made some okay uh unhexify obviously <laughs> so we have to unhexify it to to bytes okay it's private <laughs> And it runs. That's great. This row private and row public. These should be both 78 byte structure. So this is our our serialization structure. Now we want to encode it using base 58, but first we have to add 32 checksum bits derived from double SHA 256 check checksum. So this is our row private row public. We have to hash it twice. So hash it once using uh, SHA 256 and use the previous one and hash it second time. I could have write it in a nicer way, but I think it's more visible what I did here. So I used twice uh, for the private key the, the SHA 256 and for the public key I also hashed it twice. We want to add to, to the row private and row public the last four bytes. So 30, 32 bits, we, we want to add four bytes of this hashed XPUB, hashed XPRIV, last four, four, four of them to our row private and then we can encode it into base 58 so let's do that let's let's write it down i will also probably copy it now we want to copy it and do the same for the public so x pub row pub Pop, hashed, x, pop. Okay, we've got it. Now the last four, four bytes is our checksum. So we want to add it to our 78 byte uh, sequence. So row private equals, plus equals, because we want to concatenate it to the end Hush. it's private and the last four the same for row public plus equals hashed public 
last four bytes of the hashed, double hashed XPubby. And let's print it. So print B58. B58 is the the class that I create for base58 encoding because encode because uh, I want to use the function that basically I used in our previous video on base58 encoding I will link it here in the description so you guys know how it works because it's also very Bitcoin print uh, Bitcoin specific that's why I created the specific video about it and I create my own uh, dependency and let's right use it um, I haven't imported the function From base fifty eight import B fifty eight. Okay. And our X private and X public X private ends at MPHI public C E T eight M P H I C E T eight C E T eight M P H I ready so <laughs> we've got our chain master chain uh, external public key external private key from this point uh, we can start deriving uh, other other chains the derivation of them uh, we would have to use C child key derivation, so CKD functions from private parent key to private child key and private parent key to public child key. So private parent key, public child key, yeah, this one and this one. Uh, but that's for the next video. This video already was 40 minutes long and that's way too much. Thanks a lot for, for being here till the end and have a great day. See you in the next video, bye.